Hello everyone, this is Ye Kalpana here. In this video, we're going to solve a differential equation or an equation from solvable for y. So let's get going. Problem: Solve y equals to p cos p minus sine p. So why we are going to use solvable for p here? We can't factorize the given equation. First thing. Second thing. The given equation, say a half straight, is of first degree in 1. y to the power is 1. So, we can say that equation 1 is of first degree in y. So, we can solve for p. Sorry, solve for y. Since the given equation is of first degree in y and also it cannot be factorized. So, we can solve the given equation for y, right? Now, coming to the problem. Consider the given equation as 1, okay? Solution. Given equation, y equals to p cos p minus sine p. We have considered as equation 1. Now, let's differentiate it with respect to x then d by dx of y equals to d by dx of p cos p minus sine p then derivative of y with respect to x equals to d by dx of first term Minus derivative of sine p, second term with respect to x. Then we know that dy by dx is p, right? Since dy by dx is p is equals to derivative of first term. Here we are going to use u v whole prime formula u dash v plus v dash u, right? Derivative of p with respect to x into cos p plus derivative of cos p with respect to x into p minus derivative of sin p with respect to x is cos p into dp by dx. Then this becomes p equals to derivative of p with respect to x is dp by dx plus sorry we have into cos p plus derivative of cos p with respect to x is minus sin p into dp by dx into p minus cos p into dp by dx. Now this becomes p equals to cos p into dp by dx plus into minus minus sin p or p sin p into dp by dx minus cos p into dp by dx. Here, cos p gets cancelled and we'll get p equals to minus p sin p into dp by dx. Now, take this p2 or bring this p to LHS, we'll get p by p equals to minus sin p dp by dx. From this, we'll get 1 equals to minus sin p into dp by dx, okay? Or if we take or if we bring this term to LHS, we'll get p plus p sin p into dp by dx equals to 0. We can talk about this equation later. First, we'll continue here. Then, we'll get 1 equals to minus sin p into I'll write this term as, okay, into dp by 
dx. This becomes 1 into dx is dx equals to minus sin p d. Here the variables are separable so we can integrate on both sides. Or we can just write this equation as sin p dp equals to minus dx. Right? Now let's integrate. This gives integral sin p dp is minus cos p. This equals to minus integral dx is x plus integral constant c. Now let's take this c to LHS. We'll get minus cos p minus c equals to minus x. Then take minus common from the two terms of LHS. We'll get minus of cos p plus c equals to minus x. Then minus gets cancelled from both sides. Then we'll get cos p plus c equals to x or x equals to cos p plus c. Consider it as equation number 3. Sorry, we have not used any equation number 2, right? Let's take it as equation 2. Now, we'll eliminate p from equation x, sorry, from equation 2 and equation 1. Simply, we'll substitute, we don't have any x, right? So, we don't have any x in this equation and it's hard to eliminate p from equation 2 and the given equation. So, the general solution will be together x and y, right? We got x equals to cos p plus c from this one, right? This involves or this one I can say. This involves dp by dx. So, it gives a general solution x equals to cos p plus c. I mean, it leads to general solution. We will get general solution from this equation. Okay, actually, we will need to replace x or p in the equation 1 so that we will get a general solution. But in this case, it is not possible to eliminate p from equation 2 and equation 1. So, the combined form of or not combined form, the equation, these two equations comes under general solution. Since it is not possible to eliminate P from equation 1 and equation 2. So, the general solution is x equals to cos P plus C and y equals to P cos P minus sin P. Here P is considered as parameter. Okay, this completes the problem. Now, let's talk about this equation. See, we can write this equation either like this or in this form. We can just take this P to LHS or total term to LHS. So, we have seen general solution by just taking single P to LHS. Now, let's see what happens if we take the total term to LHS. So, we can take p common here, right? We'll get p times 1 plus 
sin p into dp by dx equals to 0. From this we will definitely get 1 plus sin p into dp by dx equals to 0 which leads to general solution since it has or it contains dp by dx right. We will get sin p into dp by dx equals to one, minus 1 then sin p dp equals to minus dx already we have seen this right from this we will get minus cos p equals to minus x plus c and we got minus cos p minus c equals to minus x from this we got x equals to cos p plus c right which is our equation 2 now what about this p p cannot be 0 so why why we are saying p is not equals to 0 so what happens if p equals to 0 say i'll assume p equals to 0 okay assumption if p equals to 0 what is p dy by dx right from this we will get differential dy equals to 0 and by integrating we will get y equals to c right so if we substitute y equals to c in the given equation what we will get we will just get c equals to p cos p minus sin p right so by replacing p equals to 0 and y equals to c in the given equation, the equation so should get satisfied. Okay. So, let's see whether p equals to 0 and y equals to c satisfies the given equation or not. We have equation 1. y equals to p cos p minus sin p right from this we will get y minus p cos p plus sin p equals to 0 right now I will take this RHS part y minus p cos p plus sin p now I will put values of p and y we made assumption p equals to 0, right? From this we got y equals to c. So now I am going to put p and c values here. I will get c minus p value 0 into cos 0 plus sin 0 which is equals to c minus 0 into anything is 0 plus sin 0 is 0. This equals to c. So what I got? This equation equals to c. We didn't get equals to 0. If we get equals to 0 then we can say that p equals to 0 and y equals to 0 satisfies the given equation okay so that we can say p equals to 0 okay but in our case by replacing p equals to 0 we got here c it means that p equals to 0 is a contradiction because here we got y equals to c. c is a constant, right? The singular solution does not contain constant, right? So, y equals to c cannot be a singular solution and this leads from p equals to 0. So, if this does not happen, then this will also not happen. So, p equals to 0 will be contradiction. So, finally, p is not equals to 0. If p equals to 0 and y equals to c satisfies this equation, we will just get by replacing p and y, we will get equals to 0. If we replace in LHS part the values of p and y, we will get equals to 0. If we get equals to 0, then we can say that p equals to 0 and y equals to c is a solution to this equation right simply we can say y equals to c is a solution to this problem but in our case we got equal to c which means that p equals to 0 and y equals to c does not satisfies 
the given equation and also if you notice here we are having y equals to c it cannot be a singular solution and here it cannot be p equals to 0 so p is not equals to 0 okay here then p is non zero and 1 plus sin p into dp by dx is equals to 0 right in this problem singular solution does not exist and y equal to c cannot be singular solution because we know that singular solution does not contain any arbitrary constant okay So we have seen a problem from solvable for y in this video. Hope you'll understand. We'll see you in the next video. Until then, bye-bye.